Wow, wasn't that great? Fantastic, thank you so much. Absolutely. Well, I've got a few pictures. I don't know if um, there's... There it is. Okay. So, my name is uh, Christopher Upton. I'm going to tell you a little bit about me so you kind of know where it's, where it's all coming from. My background is agriculture and forestry. I would probably describe myself as an agronomist, not a farmer. Um, but I've kind of knocked around a bit and I've been to see a lot, a lot of farms. But when I studied agriculture, it was a brave new world. It was a long time ago. And a lot of people were very, very hungry. And the Green Revolution happened. The Green Revolution. Does everybody know about the Green Revolution? A lot of people were very, very hungry and we had to produce food. And with incredible ingenuity, we grew a lot of food. We used, but to do so, we perpetuated a science that we now know was completely wrong. And I'm saying that deliberately, completely wrong. And that's a little bit what you guys are going to put right. Because, and this is the, a lot of the fundamental thinking behind the Earth Centre. We're going to talk, this is a, a no-dig horticulture operation, uh, somewhere in, in, this is northeast of the States, this is in Maine. This is a little bit what it's going to look like on the rugby pitch in three years time, and you're all going to do it. I'm not going to do it. You're going to do it. And I'm going to tell you a little bit today about what that all means and why it's so important and how you're going to experiment to create something that's absolutely, completely new. Now, I need to change the picture. How do I do that? Sorry. <laughs> Is there a way of doing that? Ah. Sorry about that. No, no. It's good to have a team, a team effort on this. So let's see. Button on the side. On the side? Right hand side, little wheel. Ah, there we go. Carbon. I want to talk about carbon. Very much about carbon and global warming. Where is it? Where actually is the carbon that we're so worried about? Well, if you just look at this, you can see this little G and the big T, these are gigatons. That means it's a big ton. Don't worry about it too much. Just think of the actual numbers. So in the atmosphere, we think, is roughly 750 and it's going up and that's the bit we're scared about because if that goes up too high we're going to fry it's going to get really hot and really uncomfortable and lots of really nice beautiful cities like venice are going to disappear under meters of water and, and we're really worried about that okay so but for it to rise it has to have come from somewhere so we blame these fossil reserves, we say, it's all coming out of the ground. It's coming out of coal and oil and gas, which is true. It's not a good thing. So these fossil reserves are going down, and in the atmosphere, it's going up. The other thing that we don't like is the ocean is soaking up a lot of the carbon. It's dissolving in the ocean, and that's becoming more acidic, and that's killing all the coral reefs. Nothing to do with plastic, by the way, guys. Completely different issue, but also very important. But the ocean, the surface of the ocean, is getting more acidic, and this is killing lots of things that we like in the ocean. And that is also not a good thing. Now let's look at the other things, the bit that we can actually do something about. Look at this the vegetation. These are the trees, this is everything. This is the Amazon rainforest. Got 580. And the soil, look at it, 1,500 gigatons right now. More than twice the amount that's in the air. And it used to be 3,000. So what happened? At the time of the Romans, imagine Biddeford, time of the Romans, it was twice as much carbon in the soil right here than there is now. So what happened? And one thing happened is we ploughed. We disturbed the soil. Is this? Uh, what do I have to do next? Oops. Right. Ah, oh, there we go. Next. Something happened. We disturbed the soil food web, and you guys are going to have to figure out how to put this back together again. So going back, think about 350 million years ago. 350, that's a long time ago, 350 million years ago, this soil food web existed. 350 million years ago, trees and plants had already cut a deal with these guys so that they could survive without us. Can you imagine? Forests were quite happy without us. We didn't have to help the wheat grow. It grew by itself. We got involved and we started ruining things, actually. But so for 
it's almost 300 million years, because it's only the last few thousand years that we've got involved. But for almost 300 million years, this system worked. So we had bacteria, fungi, nematodes, arthropods, and plants. And the plants were in charge, and they are in charge still today. The plants are the conductor. Photosynthesis, 40% of the energy from the photosynthesis is used to feed these people. When they get fed, they multiply and they die. And the nutrients in their bodies are just like you and me. A bacteria is the same as you. It's got exactly the same amount of nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, calcium, magnesium, everything else that a plant needs is in you, and a bacteria, and a fungi. When they die, the plant can feed. It doesn't need nitrates and fertilizers and everything else. So the Earth Center is about putting this back together again in an education context and a commercial environment. So what you're going to have to do to start with is measure everything. I want to, we want to measure the soil temperature, we want to measure how much carbon is in the soil, we want to count those earthworms. 40% of Britain's arable land has got no more earthworms. Zero. What do birds eat? They eat insects. If there are no insects, what happens to the bird population? Britain's bird population has crashed by 90% in the last 10 years. Is this a coincidence? You guys are going to work it out. We're going to build this soil food web back again so it will feed us. It will grow very, very healthy vegetables <coughs> and it will feed us. And what we are doing is also being part of the latest advances in agriculture. We're going to all, I'm asking you all to have to think outside the box. You know, forget about the red tractor, the plough, the seagulls fluttering behind, sun going down, lovely postcard that you get. Forget that. That, unfortunately, is not what we're going to do. Why are the seagulls behind the tractor? They don't go and turn up to find a red tractor for a bit of fun. They go because there's, no, there's lots of chopped up insects lying on the ground that they can eat. So this is, you know, people, there are people out there, agroecology, regenerative agriculture, biomimicry, and there's lots of people doing things that you're going to also work with and learn from. Um, you're going to learn about biotic glues. I did, when I started agriculture, nobody knew these existed. Nobody knew about biotic glues, but they are critical to soaking up carbon out of the atmosphere. So bacteria cover themselves in glue because they're just like you and me and they don't want to be eaten by anybody and they're in the soil and they're very vulnerable, they're tiny little creatures. One teaspoon of soil has more microorganisms than the entire population of the earth. So next time you walk across the playing fields, just you know, watch out because they're all there. These little bacteria cut themselves in glue to protect themselves. They don't want to be eaten, this biotic glue, and that protects them. And the fungi, they do the same thing. They have a slightly different glue, which is called glomerulin, which was only discovered in the 1990s. 1990s, are, today's agriculture is based on science from the 1950s. We have to change the mindset of agriculture and move forward with these biotic glues. Fungal networks... We didn't even know. You, can, you, can, you might have a species of fungi named after you. You've got, there's plenty of scope. We think there are about 6 million species of which we've identified 75,000. Penicillin comes from fungi. Our antibiotics come from fungi. We don't even know what more than 5 million of these species can do because we just concentrate on killing them. We chop them up to the pieces. We run the plant, chop them to the pieces. Birds can be eaten. So we need to now nurture. If we look after the soil, the soil will look after us. Right. Skills. Nobody cares, really, about the fact that you've got an A in your English Literature A-level. Nobody actually cares that you've got an A in Biology, or a C, or a D. There's a really... Um, Tony Wagner... Harvard Innovation Lab spent three years interviewing CEOs in America and he said to them, what is it you want? What are you looking for? Why are, well, you know, why are you going to employ people and pay them loads of money so that they can go to nightclubs and all the rest of it? What are you going to look for? Not a single CEO said, I am looking for a perfect candidate with straight A's in their A-levels. Nobody said that, ever. What they said was, I want people who can think. I want people who are creative. I want uh, people who can work in teams. That's what they were all saying. World Economic Forum has identified these skills on the right are the most important skills that you need to have 
to be, to be happy, to be yourself, to be successful in the future. Don't worry about grades, think about that. How, so the, the Earth Center, a lot of the things you're going to be doing in the Earth Center are going, you're going to be using these skills. You're going to be solving problems that we know exist, but we don't yet have all the solutions. And you are going to be involved in dealing with that. So we're going to do A-levels, because we still have to fit in the system. If I said, forget about A-levels, then your parents would be very unhappy. And the universities would say, mm, what's this? I'm not sure. So we're still going to do the A-levels, but we're going to take all the bits of the A-levels, as much as we can, and get you to do projects, and to get you to work together in teams, and to explore things, and for you to choose different aspects of what you are really interested in. You might be really interested in soil bacteria, like me, fungi. I love fungi. I, mean, I could spend the whole day looking at fungi in the microscopes. They are fascinating. But you might not. You might think, you know what, what's really important to me is making compost. Or you might not. Or you might think, what's really important to me is looking at medieval manuscripts and seeing how uh, medi medieval historians have demonstrated use of agricultural machinery through the years. It's up to you. There are, the possibilities are endless, but they really need to be linked to the concept of the Earth Center. We have one Earth, we have one planet, there's no planet B. And that's what that's all about. There's lots of vocational qualifications that we will also be slotting in. So there's, as you can see here on the, on the screen, these are about doing, about learning by doing, about getting out there, practicing things, and learning uh, practical skills that you can use. But those skills are all based around the, the Earth Center and the soil food web and no dig. We don't dig because we want to look after those microorganisms. Right. Oh, that's not really good, is it? Well, anyway, never mind. Um, sort of think about soil microbiology, sort of thing you might be able to do. Very simple things we're going to be doing, looking at soil textures, counting earthworms, love earthworms, there just aren't enough of them. Um, yeah, lots of microscopes. Have a look. We don't know. There's lots of stuff we just don't know about the soil. Now, you guys are going to be right at the cutting edge of what we don't. There's lots of stuff you guys are going to be figuring out we don't know about. Smell the earth. What does it smell like? What's Texture, feel it, composition, all these things. Make notes, measure things. Measure, 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 measure. Because then you can uh, talk about change. And this is all stuff that you are going to be doing. Your teachers and the school are going to be showing you how that can link in. Link in across subjects. I don't actually like the word subject. I think we should be much more thinking about themes. And uh, being a bit more imaginative. Repeated observation, absolutely critical. Uh, yeah, this is, I have to put this, this is microscopes. So this is, these are soils taken um, by A-level students. These are pictures taken by A-level students using microscopy um, in an A-level class in Oxford, and you can do exactly the same thing. So bottom, on the top, top left there, you've got a lovely mica, a bit of hyphae from a fungi with those nice uh, cell walls, very clear. You can see the septi. Top right, you've got protozoa up in cysts, protecting themselves from me disturbing them on our microscope plate. Another protozoa, the lovely nucleus. And here we've got a nematode feeding on bacteria uh, in a, with a lump of humic acid. It is so exciting down there. There is so much going on in the soil, as long as it's a healthy soil. If you did this with an arable soil that had been ploughed and poisoned with fertilisers and chemicals, you would not see this slide. That is what we have done, and we have to put it back. <coughs> so what, how's this going to work? Oh, yes, lots of research. How it works with higher education. We've got the A-levels, we've got the BTECs, blah, 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 blah. We want to tie you in with universities. We've already been working with Birmingham University and the University of Portsmouth. Uh, we created a geoscience diploma for people who really like rocks. I love rocks. They're great. Fungi and rocks is a really good combination. They love each other. Um, Fungi will get all the, the, the base salts and minerals out of the rocks that the soil needs. You don't need artificial fertilizers. Fungi will do it for you. If you have the right type of fungi, they'll do it for you. Um, so you can go, you can do the geoscience diploma in the Earth Centre and go straight to Birmingham University. Forget about A levels. You can do it if you want to. And we're going to be expanding this to include lots of other subjects and lots of other links. We want to get universities used to the idea that what they will get is somebody who's, who's enthusiastic and who can think and who loves their subject. 
and that's what we're going for. Data, there'll be lots and lots of data coming out of this. And already we've got universities interested in teaming up with their research departments to see what they can do with this data. We're gonna be measuring so many things and there'll be so much information coming out of this thing because we've got an amazing team. And look at you, hundreds of people collecting data which we're gonna feed through into the higher education system. Um, and, and it's these two things, actually, more than anything, that will make the Earth Centre as the place to go for environmental study in the South, in the, South, in the, the whole of the UK, I would imagine, actually. It's these two, these two areas that we will go. Uh, final thought. Yeah, the carbon, soil carbon pool is 50% of what it was before the Romans. Let's put it back. Let's put the carbon back. If we started to put the carbon back, this is a, the French government had an initiative at the Paris Climate Change Talks, and this is their initiative, which they call four per thousand. Quatre per mille, because it translates well into everything. And then you've got, so basically a quarter of a percent. So if we increase the soil carbon by a quarter of a percent per year across the world's farmlands, we would store 75% of global emissions. You know, we have, we have the technology, we know how to do this. This is not complicated. We know how to do this. We just have to do it. And the, the, the main target of the Earth Centre is not how many, what percentage of A grades you get. The main target of the Earth Centre here in Biddeford is to fix 500 kilos of carbon per year per hectare in the soil. And it's your job to prove that can happen. If you can do that, you will have met that target of 0.4%. So 500 kilograms. That's all it takes. And if everybody does that, 75% of global emissions are taken out of the atmosphere. That doesn't mean we can all go around drilling oil out of the earth, but it does give us a bit of time. Thank you very much. <laughs>